What's up, YouTube? Happy homebrew update number three. And I'm not calling it a homebrew Wednesday because, quite frankly, I don't have time to keep up with every week. Uh, I think it's been like three weeks since my last update, but it was time to do another one because a whole bunch of stuff is kind of changed and progressed, not so much in the brew room, but in the equipment side, okay? Um, just wanted to show you what, I, what I'm doing right now is actually I'm putting together a Brewer's Best IPA kit for a, a buddy. Um, just getting things brewing and he's going to be buying a little bit to help me out. And uh, yeah, so I've got things here. I've started to rehydrate the yeast. Something I learned from doing these Brewer's Best kits is if you're going to do a, a high gravity Brewer's Best, maybe a double IPA or an oatmeal stout, which I've done. Um, uh, these are all high gravity beers. And the instructions uh, on the yeast kind of tell you to rehydrate it um, or just sprinkle it in uh, on top of the wort once it's chilled. But what I've found is the yeast isn't quite strong enough to keep up with those high gravity beers and to get through the whole thing. So from now on, if I'm doing a high gravity beer, in Brewer's Best, I'll be definitely doing a yeast starter. Like, I, I won't even attempt to do it without, another, without a yeast starter. Uh, so this time around, I'm at least hydrating the yeast to kind of get it going before I, before I pitch it into the, into the IPA. It's not a high, high gravity beer, but it's a 1044, 1043 around there that it'll, it'll come in. Okay, so things are coming up to temperature, but I uh, figured I'd give you a quick update um, before we get to the boil here. So. Uh, let me grab the camera here and okay, so here's the first thing that's new now what I've done is I put together myself a mash lauder ton okay so I went and picked myself up a cooler and I made myself a sparge iron okay out of copper just drilled a bunch of holes in the bottom of it okay so there's my fancy fandangled sparge iron and there's the inside of the mash lauder ton so I've got all the fittings connected and a stainless steel hose in the bottom and that'll act as my filter. Okay? So that's pretty exciting to have a mash lauder ton and I'm getting ready to do some all grain batches. So I'm just trying to get things, you know, all the supplies put together. Um, you saw in a previous video I had made my wart chiller which is down there. It's kind of chilling. Okay? Uh, I got some bigger fermenters. I have a nine gallon aluminum pot upstairs in the garage right now. Uh, I'm taking it to a welder tomorrow to have two fittings put on. One for my thermometer, which is a half inch NPT. So we'll get that put on, as well as the uh, stainless steel uh, ball valve on the bottom. Okay, so uh, that'll be coming, but I have a couple of stock pots here, so they're going to be good enough for maybe heating up sparge water or whatever. So again, I'm, I don't have all the money in the world and I can't invest a whole bunch of money, but I'm kind of putting things together little by little. I placed a really big order online yesterday. I got a whole bunch of grain coming. Uh, I have pH stabilizer, the pH 5.0. I have some yeast nutrients, uh, a yeast smack pack, uh, I got an Erlenmeyer flask coming so I can do proper yeast starters. Um, I have some high temp silicone hose coming. Um, what else was on that order? Uh, trying to remember. Whole bunch of goodies anyway. So. The, the reason I put this big order in is because it's going to be my first all grain batch and I want to be ready for that. Um, now what I'm going to be doing is uh, it's called a sassy redhead. So it's going to be a raspberry uh, ale, a raspberry flavored fruit beer. So uh, it's going to be an ale style but it's going to be a raspberry flavor. So that's going to be my first because I've had some requests from my lady friends, uh, my wife in particular as well. She wants the fruit beer which is coming so that's going to be our first all green batch and I'll chances are I'll definitely do a video so some other things that's going on hang on so I guess he'll give you a lowdown of what's going on in the fermentation room here okay so I have got a couple of wine kits going some red wine I have a Barolo which is in secondary 
and I also have a cab salve which is in secondary so they'll be in secondary for at least another couple weeks um, I have a Brewer's Best English Brown Ale that I did okay that was just uh, a few days ago now uh, I got a batch of Cooper's Dark Ale going over there and I have a batch of Brewer's Best IPA which actually I'm gonna do a gravity test today and see if it's ready to bottle because that's the first Brewer's Best IPA kit I did and now I'm doing another one because a buddy requested it and down here we have some bottled oatmeal stout Brewer's Best and in this one we've got a whole bunch of bottles of the Brewer's Best double IPA. I'm really excited about the beers that are kind of in aging but I'm gonna leave them for at least a month. There's the double IPA and there is the Brewer's Best Oatmeal Stout so both really good beers and things are coming up to temperature here almost to the boil. I think that's all I have to share with you guys today. Um, once I figure out, like the, the my, it was my first time doing the wine kit, so once I figure it out and have done it at least once or twice, I will do a video on it. Um, that way I'll show you guys exactly the process I went through. And looking forward to doing an all green batch. Hopefully that stuff will come in, uh, the shipment will come in by the end of the week here. And you know what, it's funny, I'm not calling this a homebrew Wednesday, but today is Wednesday. <laughs> So, happy homebrew update number three. Cheers, guys. See you next time.